Hey guys, Stanford here from the Fun Robotics Network and welcome back to an episode of Funalysis. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at Ventura Regional Finals match number one. In this match, you're gonna be seeing uh, two different strategies on either side of the field with a number one alliance in red using a triple offense strategy, while the number seven seed alliance in blue is gonna be running a two offense, one defense strategy. Uh, what's also interesting about this match is you're gonna be seeing what makes the difference between a good alliance and a great alliance. You're also gonna be seeing how algae is starting to come into play at this part of the Reefscape season. So stay tuned for a look at all of that and more on another episode of Analysis. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Andy Mark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to andymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. All right, folks, so just getting into this match here, um, we've got um, Autonomous on both sides going pretty well, actually. Um, but what's really interesting is you're going to be actually seeing this number seven seed alliance um, pull ahead in Autonomous. Um, and that is mainly going to be down to uh, both alliances getting the same number of L4 Coral. However, um, the blue alliance got one in the trough, whereas the red alliance didn't, uh, their uh, L4 score actually missed and didn't land in there. Um, so this was actually kind of surprising considering the uh, offensive firepower that this number one seed alliance has. Um, let's go ahead and meet these teams too. Let's just kind of uh, see who we got on the field here. So on alliance number one, um, we've got uh, Alliance Captains 4481, Team Rembrandts, um, who were really extremely solid at this regional, um, definitely deserve the number one seed. Um, and really they have basically every ability except for a ground coral intake. That brief is covered by their partner and first pick, 4414 uh, High Tide, who again, do basically everything and have a ground coral intake. And you're gonna be seeing how that plays out uh, for the strategies inside uh, of this match. Also, they're picked up their, their third robot, 5805 assembly required. Um, we were a solid coral cycler and could climb. Uh, so a very good pick by this number one seed alliance. On the number seven seed alliance, we've got um, 971, who uh, after some scorches were kind of left uh, as the number seven seed alliance captain, which is lower than they you know probably would have been otherwise had there not been uh, a bunch of declines during alliance selection. And um, they picked uh, 4079 Quantum Leap, who were a very, once they kind of got some optimization going, were a very, very good um, Coral Cycler, uh, especially on L2 and L3. Um, so you're gonna be seeing 4079 and 971 on the Blue Alliance, just cycling back and forth um, on their respective sides of the field, right? So it's just a very simple, very clean, um, match for these guys because they just are left to their own devices to score as much coral as possible. Um, I'm going to go back a little bit here and I'm going to show you kind of the perfect, you know, microcosm of what this match is like um, and where the match actually starts to kind of go um, against the number seven seed alliance. So again, we've got the, the entire blue alliance just down here, just cycling back and forth. Very simple stuff, very effective. And you can see um, they've actually filled up the top level over here, which is going to be kind of important um, in a second. Meanwhile, on the Red Alliance side, you're going to kind of see all three robots, uh, three robots pressed up against each other. Um, 589 have playing a very dynamic style of defense. They are cycling not only between the two coral stations, trying to interrupt the Red Alliance robots that load from there uh, as much as possible. They're also actually going to occasionally pop out and come at, uh, interrupt the net scoring as well. The uh, Blue Alliance uh, have already played against Alliance number one in match number 11. And what made the big difference there was actually algae stuff. Um, so they know that they also have to defend some algae. Uh, 589 are not going to bother trying to defend um, 4414. 4414's ground intake is just good enough um, and really, really allows them to break away from defense. We're definitely seeing how ground coral um, intaking ability is making for some, some really difficult defense. Um, but what the number seven seed alliance is banking on is they're banking on the ability that, uh, or the fact that 971 plus 4079 might just be enough to uh, make up for an undefended high tide and a diminished, severely diminished um, other two robots on that red alliance. 
So you can see the scores have kind of diverged a little bit here, 121 to 104. Um, both alliances know this. They are definitely watching um, the matches, or watching the scores as things go through. But really, for the first part of the match, uh, it's actually really, really close. And you're going to see where they start to diverge right here, um, about a minute and 30 left. The number seven seed alliance has completely filled up the top row. So they are out of five point cycles that they can do. The number one alliance actually still has a lot of spots remaining on their reef on L4. What they have been doing is scoring algae. So you're gonna be seeing them kind of put even more algae in the net, but they've been using that algae to basically keep um, the lead that they had and still keep some of those L4 spots available. So they are kind of messing with the real-time scores a little bit, making it look like um, they are ahead still, but making it look closer than it actually is because they have left the highest scoring, highest potential spots until a little bit later in the match. Now you're seeing them really start to pull ahead as they fill in those five point slots. Um, and the Blue Alliance tries the best that they can. In fact, they see 971 um, switch over to the other side um, just to allow them to better get better access to uh, the uh, branches on the reef that are kind of on the other side that 4079 is uh, struggling a little bit with. Um, so the Red Blue Alliance is still is conscious of this and is still very much trying um, to keep the deficit small. Um, but that is where the Red Alliance were the pulls ahead. They, you're using this algae to um, basically allow themselves to wait to score the L4 Coral um, later on. So the Blue Alliance does try to go up for an algae, uh, 971 pulling that off right there, just straight up into that, very quick, very simple. Um, but again, it's it's really all about red from this point onward. And um, what's also interesting here is um, the Red Alliance has a triple climb, right? They have the ability to get 5805, 4414, and 4481 all up in the air. So the Red Alliance, the Blue Alliance knows uh, they need to be up by a little bit um, in order to actually um, pull ahead and maybe win this, but they kind of know that they're down. So you can see the desperation kind of starting to kick in here as, you know, they're starting to, they're still trying to cycle over there because they still have to be up via Coral um, before endgame because they know they're going to be down. 589 are going to go line up for the Blue Alliance. Um, all three Red Alliance robots are going to get lined up on the deep cages and um, they're going to pull off the triple climb successfully and, and eventually take the match. But I want to just highlight here the difference between these two sides of the field. The Blue Alliance has got a very, very complete reef. Um, they very nearly got the last coral um, on L3. Um, didn't quite get it, though. The Red Alliance has filled up most of the levels of the reef, uh, has, has filled up the, most of the top two levels of the reef as well. Um, but you're seeing why, why are the scores so different? Well, two things. Uh, one, penalties. There were some penalties against 589 who were um, did some uh, kind of illegal contact in the barge and uh, reef zones. But also, algae. Look at this net. It is just full of algae, and it's kind of hard to see with the depth of the camera, but almost all of that is going to red as opposed to the blue. In fact, the blue alliance actually outscored uh, the red alliance in terms of coral in this match. The real difference maker here is algae. So I think it's a very interesting thing to note, especially as we get towards higher levels of play and more parts of the reef starting to fill up. Algae is really what's making the difference between these two alliances. Both very similar, very strong coral capability, but it's really algae that's making the difference here. So um, do you guys think that algae will continue to be this um, dominant? Will Do you think there will be an algae meta shift as we start to get to our championships, as we start to increase uh, our level of play here in the Reefscape season? It's only week two, so we got plenty of time. So let us know what you think of uh, an algae meta uh, in the comments. Remember to like, comment, subscribe uh, to the Fun Robotics Network YouTube channel. I've been Stanford with Fun. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Funalysis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. 
Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu first.